Like the vast majority of you watching this review, I too am pleased with AMD's success in the last three or so years, particularly with the Ryzen chips. I'm glad they brought competition back to a stagnant market, and it's awesome that many core CPUs are now available to every budget. But regardless of how much AMD contributed to the health and competitiveness of the industry in the recent past, if there's one thing we definitely don't need AMD to become is another stagnant technology company, especially not one that really the small incremental refreshes of last year's products. We already have Intel for that. According to AMD though, the 3900 XT, which we are looking at today, is not a refresh of the original Zen 2 chip. It will live alongside the 3900X, so they are positioning it as the ultimate enthusiast chip. Well, if you pretend the 3950X doesn't exist, of course. So is the 3900 XT a step up from the 3900X? Is it worth getting over the 3900X, or is AMD the new Intel? With the growing trend of many core cool CPUs becoming more accessible to enthusiasts and mainstream consumers, now is a great time to learn about parallelism in computing. Today's sponsor, Brilliance Computer Science course, explains parallelism in computation with easy to understand examples. Fundamental concepts that you've heard of in some of my videos like Amdahl's Law, Pipelining and Concurrency are all explained in bite-sized chunks. With fun illustrations and relatable metaphors, that make these technical concepts less abstract and much easier to grasp. Now is also a great time to learn programming, and Brilliant's Programming with Python course is a fantastic place to start. If you are more graphics-minded, Brilliant's 3D Geometry course with interactive examples and tests that encourage learning through failure will lay the groundwork for you to get into things like 3D modeling, a skill that's always in high demand in the gaming industry, for instance. Check out Brilliant.org slash Cortex, you can sign up for free, and the first 256 people who do will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Link in the description. Jumping straight into the benchmarks and starting with Intel's favorite real-world test in Cinebench R20 multi-core, we see that the new Ryzen 3900 XT is only slightly ahead of the 3900X at stock settings. So this is straight out of the box. Intel's latest 10900K lags behind the 12-core Ryzen's in multi-core, but when we look at single-thread performance, Intel's chip jumps ahead of the 3900X with a new entrance the XT, now virtually tying the 10900K after a 6-run average. This pretty much sums up the new 3900 XT. It's a refinement over the 3900X, which now matches Intel's best consumer-grade chip in this price range, even in single-threaded performance. But this doesn't tell the whole story. Before we move ahead to other tests, let's look at the main differentiator between the X and the XT variants in these new Ryzen chips and that's in the overclocking potential. The 3900X was fairly disappointing when it came to overclocking with commercial coolers at least, usually hitting a wall at around 4.2 GHz, with some better bins clocking a bit higher. The 3900XT, however, at least my review sample, which AMD was kind enough to provide, reaches 4.5 GHz on all cores, completely stable. It crashes at 4.6 GHz all core, and pushing the two best cores per CCX to 4.6 while maintaining the rest at 4.5 didn't increase performance, in fact it results in a performance regression. Nevertheless, with all cores overclocked to 4.5 GHz, in Cinebench R20 multi-thread the 3900XT got an impressive 7968 points after a 6 or an average. That makes it 8% faster than the 3900X at the max overclock that I got out of my sample. The 3950X, however, is still significantly ahead thanks to its extra 4 cores. By the way, according to AMD, there won't be a next version of the 3950X. Where things get a bit strange is when we look at the single threaded score for this overclock. While at stock settings, the 3900XT was matching Intel's 10900K and now actually performs worse in single threaded rendering, down to 519 points versus the 500. 
130 it achieved stock. This is likely because of some sort of throttling that's limiting the chip's single core performance here. So while overclocking makes a significant difference in multi-threaded tile rendering, it's actually best to keep it at stock for single threaded workloads. In which case, as you might have guessed, you might as well just stick to the 3900X. For reference, here's my test bench for all these results. And you can see I'm using the Kraken X62, one of the best performing all-in-one coolers on the market. And overclocked, the 3900 XT was only reaching 72 degrees Celsius under full load versus 64 degrees stock. So it's not for a lack of good cooling in my testing. The Zen 2 chips still show some inconsistent behavior when overclocked. There's a new version of Ryzen Master also launching today, so it will be interesting to see if it's actually feasible to set up a bunch of profiles that you can switch between four different workloads. I think the performance differences are so small that it's probably not worth the effort. Now taking a look at one of the most used consumer grade applications on the market, Photoshop, we see that AMD is still slower than Intel's 10900K, with the new 3900 XT just marginally ahead of the 3900X also. And before we move on to games, let's look at another synthetic, this time the popular 3D Mark Time Spy. Here my sample got 12425 points in the CPU score, and that's with a 1080 Ti. So a slight increase over the 3900X, but nothing to write home about. So looking at just a couple CPU bound games in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, AMD is closing the gap to Intel's top gaming chip with the 3900 XT now virtually tied with the 10900K. By the way, if you buy the 3900 XT before the 3rd of October, you will get the next Assassin's Creed Valhalla for free. So there's that. And finally looking at another CPU heavy game, in Total War Warhammer 2, we see a small increase in performance for the 3900 XT versus the X variant, putting AMD now pretty much at parity in the few games where Intel still led. So with that out of the way, and judging by this very quick look at performance, you could be mistaken for thinking this is a worthwhile CPU purchase. But there are a few things I'd like to point out before you make any decisions. Firstly, looking at the product box, we can see that the XT has gone on a bit of a diet. Why is the box so much thinner? Surely because AMD found a special kind of CPU cooler that's much smaller than the one that comes with the 3900X, right? I mean, surely AMD wouldn't possibly ship this new CPU without a cooler, right? I mean, it's AMD we're talking about here, not Intel. Ah, uh, yeah. So perhaps the two companies are not that different after all. What the 3900XT is launching at $499 at a time when the 3900X can be found for as little as $430 US dollars, and while the XT offers about a meager 48% increase in multi-threaded performance, and even smaller increases if any in single-threaded workloads, and despite the fact that the stock cooler that comes with the 3900X would work perfectly fine with the XT and give you pretty much the same level of performance, AMD has decided that it has done enough to disrupt the market, and it's now time to rest on their laurels. A cooler that probably costs AMD $5 or even less to include is now a luxury we're not entitled to. Now, mind you, AMD is not calling the XT chips a refresh. These will live alongside the X variants. But the performance increases would indicate that these are indeed just refreshes. They also claim these chips are a new improved design on an improved 7 nanometer process. But when I asked if new masks were required for these chips, AMD had no comment. The official support and memory is the same at 3200 MHz, the fabric clock is unchanged, and the topology is the same. I'm sorry AMD, but this is exactly what you call a refresh. AMD claims they decided not to include a cooler because these XT chips are aimed at us, the enthusiasts, who are going to get an aftermarket cooler anyway. So does that mean that the 3900X, which comes with a sweet RGB cooler, is not for us enthusiasts? <laughs> well, at least AMD shareholders will be happy with the increased margins for the XT chips. Another thing I thought was interesting during the media briefing for these chips was that AMD's marketing was adamant to point out that the rumors saying that Zen 3 won't be coming out this year are false. So Zen 3 will be here, 100% guaranteed by the end of the year. Cool, right? But when myself and others asked if that meant that the client Zen 3 CPUs, which are meant to replace precisely these Zen 2 chips, 
groups are also coming this year, AMD decided to keep that information to themselves. But they won't tell us if that means that these XT chips will be replaced in just a few months by their Zen 3 counterparts. They are saying these chips are for enthusiasts, but there are seemingly no new enthusiast-grade features to speak of. Even the overclocking potential still hits a ceiling, at which point every chip crashes, at least judging by my fellow reviewers' samples at the time of testing. And to top all of this nonsense off, now you don't even get a bloody cooler. So is the 3900X a good product? In a vacuum, it's not just good, it's incredible. Just three years ago, you'd have to shell out $1,200 to get a 12-core chip like the 7920X from Intel. Now you get a much better CPU for a fraction of the price. But CPUs don't live in a vacuum. Well, unless you are talking about 50-year-old CPUs. Because the 3900X exists, the 3900XT is utterly pointless. The fact that it doesn't even come with a cooler and is launching at the same price as the 3900X launch, while offering a meager 100 megahertz uplift in clocks on average, and while being aimed squarely at the enthusiasts, so that being me and you, the message that sticks out to me here is that AMD thinks enthusiasts are idiots. I mean, how else are we supposed to interpret this product launch? I understand that AMD is a corporation with responsibilities towards their shareholders, and I know Lisa Su has promised them higher margins, and I'm fine with that, but don't give me this bullshit about this not being a refresh, about this being aimed at the enthusiast, and thus you decided to remove a cooler that costs you five bucks or less, and then when I waste my time testing it, I see that I'm basically retesting the 3900X, because that's what this is, a 3900X that you can overclock a bit higher. Not only can I absolutely not recommend the 3900XT, the fact that AMD is adamant to point out that Zen 3 is coming in a few months, but is not being straight about the client chips, I'm now kind of forced to not recommend any of the Zen 2 chips if you are building a new machine now. Because in a couple of months, you might wish you'd have saved the money to buy the next gen chips. If you absolutely need a new CPU right now, I'd say just get a Ryzen 3600. If you desperately need a 12 core CPU specifically, then get the 3900X. Whatever you do, do not buy an XT variant. You'll be wasting your money. Just get the regular X versions. And to finish this one off, I really hope AMD continues to build on the extraordinary work they did in these last three years with Zen and continue to raise the bar. I really hope these XT products that are clearly just shareholder pandering are not the direction that AMD will take now that they are firmly in the lead. I hope this was just a mistake that will be corrected in a few months, seeing as AMD is positioning this as a product for enthusiasts. Let's just make it very clear for AMD that we, enthusiasts, want significant higher performance with each product launch. We want a better cooler included if we are supposed to be paying a premium, and we want new enthusiast-grade features. So basically, the exact opposite of what you guys are doing with these XT chips. I hope that clears it now. There are plenty of YouTube channels out there that will pander to your confirmation bias and will make you feel special by saying nice things about the companies you've attached yourself emotionally to. So if that's what you're after, you've clearly come to the wrong place. If on the other hand you enjoy unbiased product reviews like this one, then consider joining my Patreon for just $1 per month and help support my work. You will also gain exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where myself and other enthusiasts can give you advice on which components you should invest in for your next PC build. Thanks for watching and until the next one.